We're having a speaking day today again. Weird, strange, or salacious. It's probably always mostly thrillers. So for her, this whole like, I feel like I'm doing the Oscars. This very strange, so why did I do that? I feel like this is where I coined dark and messed up people doing dark and messed up things. The dude in The Princess Bride, Maui. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. And welcome to kind of a book recommendation video slash showing a lot of love to a bunch of female lead characters that I love in some of these books. So, or actually these are all books with female lead characters that I love, which is the whole point of the video. So this was actually a recommendation from one of my subscribers. Thank you very much. And it was like, I could absolutely do a video like that. That's a brilliant idea. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> That's what I love about this community is like, you guys have brilliant ideas. You're looking for specific recommendations. So I am thrilled to be doing this video today and most likely could do multiple videos like this because there are so many amazing ladies in the books that I love, but this is the first of we'll see how many. And it's mostly thrillers because of course it is because it's me. And if you're here, you know, it's mostly thrillers, but let's get in to ladies that I love in a whole bunch of books and try and mumble a little bit less. So the first book I want to talk about is The Night Swim by Megan Golden. And in this book, we are following a true crime podcaster named Rachel Crawl. And I love Rachel. So I feel like first, and I will fact check this and let you guys know, I feel like I heard a rumor that there's going to be another book with Rachel, which makes a ton of sense because this absolutely could become a book series. But this is Megan Golden's second book and I loved it. So Rachel, true crime podcaster, and she is heading to this small town to cover a very explosive controversial case. And I would say this case in the book is inspired by the Chanel Miller Brock Turner case in that we have an Olympic hopeful sort of beloved by the town and he is accused of raping one of the girls in the high school. And this is like a, kind of a similar vibe with Beartown where you have this case that comes forward, it divides the town, it brings up a lot of emotions, a lot of feelings, and it's definitely a very difficult case and a difficult read in a lot of ways. And on top of that, when Rachel comes to town and like she is a very well-known podcaster, she has a huge following and she winds up covering this case sort of live as it's happening. And while she's in this town, she gets a note on the windshield of her car asking her to investigate a cold case from many years ago. And she gets drawn into that as well. So we get multiple timelines, multiple cases. Again, this very small town. So you have a lot of players who are around in both the past and the present, past and the present words. And I just loved it. And I really enjoyed Rachel as a character, which hello is the whole point of the video. But I thought she was just like has such a strong voice. I really enjoyed watching her navigate through both of these cases and her journey in this book. And I really was just drawn to her as a character. I thought she was strong and well-written. I have read two of Megan Golden's books. I have not read her most recent one yet, but in her first two books, I very much enjoy her writing and her characters. And she's not afraid to go dark, so of course I love it. But I think Rachel is such a great character and the idea of her getting another book, which again makes sense because she's a true crime podcaster, gets me so excited. So I hope that's actually true. By now I will have fact checked it for you guys. So <laughs> just watch the screen. And I just thought it was great. So if you haven't already checked out this book, it's just, it's so, so good. And if you're a true crime fan, I think you'll just like love it that much more, but loved it. Another of my most favorite characters, which I've talked about many times is Chloe from Never Saw Me Coming by Vera Kurian. So this book is just so deliciously fun and I loved it so much. And in this book, we are getting a group of seven students who are in this secret study at their college. They are all freshmen and it is a study of psychopaths and psychopath behavior. And nobody knows about the study. Nobody can know about these students. The students aren't actually allowed to know about each other either. But then one of the students in the group winds up getting murdered and it becomes a question of, has someone found out about the study and are they targeting the group? But for Chloe, our girl, our main character, who I love so much, but for Chloe, this whole like, the hunter becomes the prey kind of a thing is just sort of an annoying nuisance because she has come to this college 
Sure, she's happy to do the psychopath study, but her main mission is her plot to kill her childhood friend, Will Bachman, who has done her wrong. So she's like, I'm just here to murder somebody else. Could somebody kind of stop murdering the psychopath group? Thank you very much. So I love her no filter, no nonsense, just absolutely laugh out loud at moments. Humor in this. There is obviously some darkness in this, which I feel like is a bit of a given. So you get a mystery, you get like lots of different motives and motivations, some very interesting characters in this, and I loved it. But I thought Chloe was just so smart and funny, and I just like fell in love with the killer. And I just think she's just absolutely great. Like she just wants to murder this dude from like back in the day. And she's like, can everyone just leave me alone and like leave me to my murder? Thanks. So I loved her so much. I love Vera Kurian's writing. This was her debut and I am like dying for her next book to come out. But if you haven't already discovered her, I highly recommend this one. I had actually done this on audiobook and then purchased the book afterwards because I loved the audio so much. So the audiobook is really, really well done, but I really feel like you can't go wrong with this book if you have similar taste to me. The next book I have, basically every woman in this book is amazing. So The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. This is the first of two of her books that I have read. Like she has more than two books. I have read two of her books and I loved everything about this book. So we get dual timelines, upstate New York, 1982 and 2017. So in 82, a woman named Viv has taken this job working at the Sundown Motel and she winds up disappearing. And then in our 2017 timeline, we meet a woman named Carly. So Carly is Viv's niece. And after Carly's mom passes away, she herself is finding herself like really just untethered and lost. And she winds up throwing herself into trying to find out what happened to her aunt. So she goes to the Sundown Motel, which is still there in upstate New York, and she winds up working there and really, really weird stuff happens. So it's not a spoiler to tell you guys that this is supernatural ghosty. This is definitely one of those books where I'm like, it's safe to read at night. And then I would flip a page and I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm completely freaked out right now. But I thought the atmosphere was amazing. But in both the past and present timelines, we get so many amazing women in these in this book in these stories but i was such a huge fan of all of them and viv and, and carly like i say really like lead the charge here but you get friendships you get some police investigation about what's happening you get some mystery obviously and i just thought it was so well done i thought they were strong they were empowered they were like so brave to be working in this creepy flippant hotel where really creepy stuff happens. Like I would have been crying and running <laughs> the first sign of anything weird happening. So I just absolutely loved it so much. And I think for, as a first, like my introduction to Simone St. James, this really set such a huge bar for me, but I was just so drawn to all of the women in this book. And I think she did a spectacular job. So I am going to pick up the Broken Girls next, by which I mean my next Simone St. James book. But if you guys are looking to get into her or haven't read this one yet, highly recommend it, obviously. And I just think the ladies are totally amazing. So such ma on all levels, such a hit. Okay, now for something on the very backlist side, I have The Client by John Grisham. And in this book, we get an attorney named Reggie. And I love Reggie. Her name is Reggie Love. <laughs> I love Reggie Love. So if you guys have seen the movie of this, Susan Sarandon plays her. So I feel like it's very hard for me to unsee that. So I read the book before the movie and then have since reread the book. And I can't not see Sir, like Susan Sarandon in this. And I just absolutely love it. So in this book, we have an 11 year old boy named Mark and he winds up witnessing this very bizarre suicide of this man. And before the man dies, he tells Mark a secret and there are a whole bunch of people who are now coming after Mark because he knows something that is sort of worth dying over. So Mark winds up hiring Reggie and she is a 52 year old divorcee who's been through more than anyone could ever imagine and survived. And she is tough, she is feisty, and she loves to help kids who have been overlooked by or abused by the system. So they form this wonderful friendship and it's caring and it's beautiful. And I know that sounds really probably kind of silly, 
um, to talk about like this beautiful, I feel like I'm talking about Casablanca, <laughs> the beginning of a beautiful friendship for Reggie and Mark, but it's sort of very typical Grisham. I'm just checking. This came out in 93. So it has like all the hallmarks of a Grisham book where you've got just like a whole bunch of like dangerous things going on and life at stake and a bit high octane in some ways, but there's also so much weight and emotion to this book. Like I cried when I read this book and I reread it a couple years ago and I cried again when I reread it. And I just absolutely love Reggie. And I think she's just such a force and just such an amazing woman. And I think Grisham really wrote her really well. And I just love it. I have such an affection for this book and like such fond memories the first time I read it, but I really just fell in love with this story. And it's definitely, it's funny, like you read a thriller from the 90s and it reads as such a slow burn, but it's it's still like so good and so engrossing. And there's so many great scenes in this. And this is definitely one of those ones where I feel like the movie does a really good job, but I would definitely read the book first. But I really enjoyed the movie version of this as well. But really, really well done. If you were looking for some old school books or maybe a little bit of legal thriller, there you go. Next up, one of my most favorite authors, Jennifer Hillier, and this is Wonderland. So this is her book set at an amusement park, which is creepy as all get out. And I know I've talked about this book before. I've talked about all of these books before, but I love this one. And one of my favorite things about this book is our main character, Vanessa Castro. So it is her first day as the deputy police chief in this town of Seaside. And she has left Seattle. She has brought her daughter to this town and you know she's got her reasons for leaving Seattle and coming here and she used to come to this town in the summer when she was a kid she actually worked at Wonderland this amusement park when she was younger and now her daughter is working there but when the book opens <laughs> this is like I read the back of it every time because it's like the best I feel like description that can like I can't do it any justice so Wonderland is the amusement park that is basically the lifeblood of this small town. So it brings all the tourists in. It creates so many jobs for people. The entire town revolves around it. And basically the town will do anything and everything it can to protect it. And nothing will get in the way of Wonderland operating. So no matter how weird, strange, or salacious, weird, strange, or salacious things happen, um, it kind of always sort of gets swept under the rug. So in this book, when it first opens, so we talk about like how creepy and eerie Wonderland is. And it says, maybe it's the Clown Museum, home to creepy wax replicas of movie stars and a massive collection of antique porcelain dolls. Or maybe it's the terrifyingly real House of Horrors. Or maybe it's the dead, decaying body left in the midway for all the wonder workers to see. So our good friend Vanessa has no connections to this town. She is loyal to no one but her job. And she is going to find out what the heck is going on here. So I just loved her. I just thought she was so strong, so strong. <laughs> Can you tell I'm having another word day? Such a strong character. I really love the dynamic of her with the other characters in this book. And Wonderland is one of those books where we get a character from a previous Jennifer Hillier book that pops in here. And then Vanessa herself makes an appearance in a later Jennifer Hillier book. I don't want to spoil which one for you but she does show up in a later book and I just loved her so much. So I would be thrilled to see some more Vanessa and I just think she's absolutely amazing. I just love her as a character. This is definitely one of my favorite Jennifer Hillier books and it was creepy and it was fast and it is dark and messed up people doing dark and messed up things and it is people who are making choices and consequences and I just love that about her work. I love the messiness of her characters and how real they feel, even though I have not knock wood, come across a dead decaying body at an amusement park, but I just really enjoyed everything about it. And I know I talk about all of her books all the time, but I feel like it's been a minute since I've mentioned this one. And again, I love me some Vanessa, so highly recommend this one. It's all the hallmarks of a Jennifer Hillier book. The next book I have is Beach Read by Emily Henry, and I love me some January Andrews. So I, you guys know, I'm not a typical contemporary romance reader. And I read this a couple of years ago. So I read this actually 2021. I'm losing all my mind with time. And this is one of those books where I didn't know what I wanted to read. And I had this on my shelf because I, of course, went into it with like everybody was talking about it and I was having all the FOMO. And I was amazed with how in love with this book I fell. 
And one of the things I loved about this book and one of the things I... Okay, had to play a game of memory card switcheroo. So back to Beach Read <laughs> in case things look a little different to you guys. So I have found over the years that I love when a romance book incorporates some weight and some heavier topics and more to the storyline than just straight up romance. And I am here for it. I am here for heavier subject matter. I am here for the messiness of the characters. I'm always here for great writing. And I loved this book so much. And I will admit that I think I am prob probably partially partial to this. <laughs> because it's a book about writers. So January is a writer. So she winds up going to this beach house to try and finish her book. And her neighbor is this guy, Augustus, who is like her arch nemesis. She writes romances. He writes literary fiction, although he kills off a whole bunch of people. So he seems like my kind of a guy. And long story short, they sort of wind up working together to kind of help each other through their writer's block and they're dealing with their past with each other but there is so much in this book in terms of weightiness and emotion and dealing with family and loss and grief and kind of you know figuring out sort of where you are when you feel very untethered and when you're just unclear about things and i feel like i'm doing a terrible job writing or talking about this book but i really just enjoyed january so much and i feel like she's so well written and a lot of what she's going through i just felt like i could relate to in different ways and i really just enjoyed her as a character and i love again characters that have imperfections and who don't always make the right decisions who say and do the wrong things. This is not a point A to point B kind of a relationship. And there's also great humor and great wit to this book. And I just loved it so much, but I really, really enjoyed her. And I think, you know, something about people when they're sort of in that lost phase of their life, there's something about that that I'm always very much drawn to. And I just loved it so much. So cheers to January, loved this book. Okay, the next one I feel like I'm asking a lot of you guys to commit to, but you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. <laughs> Slash, you don't have to take any of my recommendations. But I'm going to talk about my friend Cassie Maddox from In the Woods and The Likeness by Tana French. So we meet Cassie in In the Woods, and then The Likeness, she really takes center stage. Although I argue, again, she plays such a huge role in this book that I really feel like it's an embarrassment of riches that we get so much Cassie. So Cassie is a police detective. She is part of the Dublin Murder Squad. It's the Dublin Murder Squad series. And in book number one, she is partnered with this guy, Rob Ryan. They've been partners for a long time. And they are investigating a child who was murdered and found in the woods in this small town, Knocknaree. And 20 years ago, that town also suffered a terrible fate when three young children went into the woods. Only one of them came out. He has no memory of what happened. He was low-key covered in blood that was not his own, and he doesn't know what happened to his friends, and it was never solved. So there's a lot of questions of, are the past and the present connected? What's going on here? But so much of Tana French's books, based on the two of them that I've read so far, is as much as we get police investigation, it is very heavy on the relationships between the characters and we get a lot of relationship between Cassie and Rob and I loved it. And I was such a fan of Cassie. She is strong and she's determined and she previously worked in Undercover before she was on the Murder Squad. And in book number two, when she takes center stage, when this book opens, it's six months after this book ends and a woman's body has been found. And not only does she basically look exactly like Cassie, she is carrying the identification of the name of a woman who was Cassie's undercover name. So who was this woman really? Because nobody knows. And how did she get that information? Because when Cassie was undercover, it was obviously top secret. So Cassie winds up getting pulled into this investigation. But I think Cassie is such an interesting character. There's so many layers to her. There's so much kind of dark humor in this book. There's a lot of wit in both of, in both of these books, this book. And I just loved her so much. And she is what like made me want to like dive immediately into this afterwards. And I'm not sorry about it at all. And I just loved her so much. I think there was just so much to Cassie and she's such an interesting character. And I'm just obsessed with her, as you guys can tell. So if you're feeling super ambitious, A, think 
the series is a great series. I've only read two books so far, but book number three is on my 23 and 2023. And I just love Tana French's writing. So it's police procedural, but it's relationships. Definitely dark humor in this, definitely dark content in these books, but just so beautifully drawn and well done. Loved them. I did a combination of audio and physically reading both of these. So if you are partial to one or the other, or a little bit of both, I think you can't go wrong. But Cassie is fantastic. Both of these books made my best of 2022 as well. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Another book I'm obsessed with, as you guys know, is Hello Transcriber by Hannah Morrissey. And I am obsessed with Hazel. Hazel is like so many of the things I wish I could be in terms of braveness and determination and just fierceness and how she just pushes through things. And I just loved her so much. So this is the first book in the Black Harbor series, although you can read them in either order. So book number two is The Widowmaker and the town of Black Harbor is the center of this series. And I love it. So this is Hannah Morrissey's debut. I was so blown away by her atmosphere and her writing. And she definitely reminded me of Tana French as well, because you get such dark atmosphere, you get police procedural, but you also get a lot of relationship. This is a very small book by the by. And I just loved watching Hazel's journey. And I think because Hannah Morrissey herself was a police transcriber, and I'll tell you what this book is about in half a beat. <laughs> I couldn't not picture Hannah Morrissey as Hazel in this book. I also just think Hannah Morrissey seems like the coolest lady on the planet. So maybe that's also why I'm a little bit partial to Hazel, but I really enjoyed her. So when this book opens, Hazel gets a job as a police transcriber in this town of Black Harbor. So she is married. She, every time I say the word married, I say it like married. I feel like I'm like the dude in the Princess Bride, Maui. <laughs> So Hazel's been married for a few years. She is looking to get herself a new job. She is living in this very, very, it's like this very desolate, dark, crime-ridden, cold, icy town. And she winds up working the overnight shift as the police transcriber. So she works like the 11 to seven overnight. And that's like, depending on your glass half full, half empty point of view, it's either like the best things happen or the worst things happen at night because it's like all the dark and messed up cases are coming through at night. And as much as she's also like doing warrants and typing up other stuff, the core of her job is to transcribe the information that the police are filing for their reports for the cases that they're working on. And she is privy to the dark side of her own town that she's living in. And she's not allowed to talk about anything with anyone outside of the police force. Obviously there's confidentiality, but she finds out very quickly about the really dark underbelly of this town. And her neighbor confesses to hiding a body in a dumpster. And she is shook by this. And she winds up sort of getting pulled into the investigation with this renegade cop. And I loved it. But Hazel, again, she just is such a force to reckon with. There's so much strength to her as a character, which I very much admire. She is also an aspiring writer, which <laughs> I very much am. But <laughs> Man, her tenacity is amazing in this book. So I could like take a thing or two from her. And I just really, really enjoyed it. So highly recommend this book if you haven't already discovered it. I'm also a huge fan of Morgan from book number two, who is the main female lead in that one. But there's just something about Hazel that I just love to pieces. And this book is just amazing. And then the last book I want to talk about, I'm going to double down on my Jennifer Hillier love and one more time talk about Jar of Hearts. So this is definitely the dark side of thriller writing. And I obviously love it. I've talked about this book so many times. And Gio is one of these characters who is so complicated and there is no reason that you should like her in so many ways, but I found myself just loving her as a character and rooting for her. And man has this woman made choices and mistakes and she on paper in so many ways is completely unlikable, but it's also hard not to like her. And man, did that mess with me in a lot of different ways too, but I very much enjoyed it. So in this book, we follow Gio in two different timelines. So in high school, junior year, she was best friends with Angela and this guy Kaiser. Like they'd been friends since they were kids, just like three musketeers. And then 14 years later is the present day when the book opens. So 
Back when they were juniors in high school, Angela went missing and nobody ever knew what happened to her. She was never found. They never connected anybody to her disappearance. But then in the present day, Kaiser, who is now a police detective, has found out what happened to Angela because they found her remains buried in the woods near Gio's childhood home. And Gio winds up getting arrested when the book is open, when the book opens. <laughs> She's arrested when the book opens because she knew what happened to Angela back in the day and never told anybody. And as we learn in the opening pages of the book or on the front cover, if you're going that route, Angela was the victim of a serial killer known as Calvin James. And before he was a known serial killer, he was Gio's boyfriend in high school. So we follow Gio on this journey of reckoning that she has to go on. And we see the past leading up to what happened to Angela. So I, like I say, really enjoyed Gio and she is a complex character. Again, a lot of darkness to this. This is like, I feel like this is where I coined dark and messed up people doing dark and messed up things. There is definitely choices and consequences. There are past and present mysteries. It definitely goes to some dark and uncomfortable places, which shocked me. And I like, there are scenes that like, shocked me and I wouldn't say I loved, but I loved this book. And I reread it last year. It is still my favorite Jennifer Hillier book. I've read them all. And to me, this is the darkest book she has written to date. And if you can read this, I think you can read anything that she writes. And if you are looking to get a little bit deeper into her collection, I highly recommend this one. I just think it's so brilliant and I love it so much. It was the first I read by her. I feel like I already said that. It made me fall in love with her as a writer. And Gio is just such an interesting character to me and coming at it from a writer hat on talk about going all in and leaving nothing behind and putting everything on the page and taking every risk and every gamble. I think it was just such a brave, smart choice like that she just made with this book and over and over again with her character's choices in this book. And I just loved it to pieces. So not that she's my favorite female character, but she's definitely right up there. I love it. So that's gonna do it for the first round. Let me know, you guys, if you've read any of these books, do you agree or disagree with these main characters? And of course, tell us all your favorite female leads. So I definitely wanna dive deeper into this and I feel like I have like a nugget of an idea of some videos to make coming up. So this was brilliant. Thank you for the suggestion very much. But let me know if you've read any of these books you would recommend, characters that you love, obviously in the books that you would recommend. And we can all chat about it down below. But thank you guys so much for watching, of course, for being here, for hanging out. I'm so grateful for it. And I will see you guys in another video really soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.